Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about critical speed of single rotor in damped systems. Now we have already discussed this that critical speed also known as the whirling speed and whipping speed is basically the speed when the shaft it tends to vibrate violently and this critical speed it uh, depends on the various factors depending upon what type of system we are using damped or undamped system. Now what happens whenever there is a rotor which is mounted on a shaft and the center of mass which is denoted by G and the geometric center if they do not coincide with this point O which is uh, the center of uh, center line of the shaft. So what happens when the shaft it starts rotating it is subjected to centrifugal force because of this distance right between the geometric center and center of mass which we are denoting by E also called as eccentricity and because this force is acting in this uh, you know in the radially outward direction therefore what happens more deflection takes place with time which we are denoting by Y that is the additional deflection. So in equilibrium condition the centrifugal force is equal to resisting force of shaft and if we balance these equations now the shaft is acting as the restoring member as a restoring force so here the shaft is doing the work of uh, spring let's say if uh, we say a restoring element so therefore the resisting force on shaft is the stiffness of the shaft into y that is the additional deflection and we found the value of this additional deflection which is dependent upon eccentricity and the ratio of natural frequency and the frequency of the system so this is what we are actually concerned with is the critical speed of shaft that is when omega c that means the critical speed is equal to the natural speed or the frequency of the system and this is the condition we are interested in because what will happen when as soon as this condition is reached the amplitude of vibrations will be very large and beyond this the system will be damaged. Now the system we discussed uh, now had a mass right the inertia element and the spring element which we are considering the shaft right but what will happen if a damping element is introduced to the system so what we are doing we are placing this whole system the shaft which is uh, having a rotor right and the which is fixed at the bearings we are placing the whole system in a damp in a viscous damping medium right so what will happen again because the center of mass is not coinciding with the geometric center so there is this distance e that is the eccentricity and r is the distance which is causing the uh, uh, basically the more deflection that we were talking about so we are denoting that by r and the spring force now what will happen when the shaft it starts rotating the centrifugal force is acting in the radially outward direction so the spring force basically this is the shaft that is applying the uh, restoring force it will act in the opposite direction so if no damping medium is there centrifugal force is equal to the spring force or the resisting force but when the damping medium is applied this is how the system looks like if we see the system from the side view what we find that the geometric center the center of mass and this axis of the shaft rotation which is this axis all three of them they do not lie in the same line as they were uh, as it was the case in case of uh, when we were talking about the undamped systems so this is basically the axis of rotation right and let's say this is the mass right which is at this point q so this is the distance e from the axis of rotation and if we make this construction we join this triangle so let's say this is the axis at point o right and we can also make a construction if we draw a perpendicular from this point q so this point is basically this point q is this point where the centrifugal force is acting in radially outward direction so if we make this construction let's say this point is p which is making angle 5 with the axis of the shaft right 
and let this angle be alpha with the axis of the shaft right now what are the three forces acting the first force is acting radially outward that is the centrifugal force which is basically mr omega square but in this case the distance from the center or the axis is a so it becomes ma omega square right the next force that is acting is acting along this distance r which is the spring force and what is this r is this uh, distance so the restoring force is acting in this direction right now because all the three forces have to produce the equilibrium condition so there has to be a vector uh, you know there has to be a triangle actually it is not like uh, two forces equal and opposite balancing each other and the third force is the damping force which is acting tangential to the direction of rotation so in this case we are assuming that the system is rotating in the anti clockwise direction right and the damping force is acting tangential to it and we are also assuming that uh, the system is placed in a viscous damping medium so this is the direction of the damping force right so this is basically the side view for uh, better uh, visualization what i've done i've just rotated this diagram in this way right the same things are there or you may say if this is the side view this is the top view of the rotor both ways it's correct right so let's uh, take the top view you have already understood that the direction of forces this is m a omega square opposite to this or in this direction of r right restoring forces acting and in the direction tangential to rotation of this uh, rotor on the shaft we are having this damping force which is c into v now we already know the damping force is the damping coefficient c into velocity of the system right so here we see all the three forces with this is the damping force the spring force or you can say the restoring force and the centrifugal force and we've already uh, understood that these angles alpha and phi these angles are assumed for the geometric analysis of the system now we see that if all these three forces are producing the equilibrium condition that means the summation of all the forces should be equal to zero now because all the forces are acting at certain angles so we can say that if the summation of forces is equal to zero so the summation of the components should also be zero that means the summation of all the forces in x direction in x axis let's say and y axis it should be equal to zero right so just by looking at the geometry we can say that a sin alpha so this is a right if we talk in this triangle let's say this triangle is basically q and this is o this is p and let this be um let's say n right so if we look in this triangle q o p so a sin alpha is what a sin alpha is this component right that is q p it is equal to e sin phi so if we look in this triangle that is q n p so this is e sin phi right because this q p is common for both the triangles so this let this be equation number 1 now a cos alpha what is a cos alpha a cos alpha is this term which is o p right so what is o p o p is basically r plus e cos phi so this let this be equation number 2 now what we are doing we are balancing the tangential forces and the radial forces so what are the tangential forces that means along the vertical forces that is m a ohm because this m a right the first component of this m a omega square along this axis right so if this is m a omega square let's say the centrifugal force and this angle is alpha right the angle with this horizontal line so this is what this is centrifugal force sin alpha and the other force that is acting in tangential direction is the damping force which is this force right so minus cv is equal to 0 so we we already know that v the velocity is equal to r omega so we can replace v with r omega right and from this equation 1 we can also replace a sin alpha with e sin phi so the 
value of e sin phi it comes out to be this which is cr upon m omega so let this be equation number 4 now if we balance the radial forces right the horizontal forces so what are the forces one will be this component which is m a omega square cos alpha right and the other force because this is in opposite direction which is minus s into r right so this distance is r is equal to 0 right and if we look from equation 2 we can replace a cos alpha so we have replaced here a cos alpha with r plus e cos phi right so this is the equation that we get so we can write e cos alpha in this way so what exactly we are concerned with we are concerned with the value of r right which is the deflection taking place in the system so if uh, I square and add the equation number 4 and 5 so what exactly happens sine square phi and cos square phi so sine square phi plus cos square phi becomes 1 so this becomes e square and both the terms on the RHS we have just squared it and written it right so from this equation we can take r common from this so it will be r square here also r square is there so we can take it common so it comes in the denominator on left hand side so this is how we can write the equation we have just taken out the r component right now in this equation if we if i multiply and divide the whole equation by omega this is how the equation will look like right and this m omega square because this is a common denominator we can take it to the numerator so this the equation becomes this now we already know that the natural frequency of system omega n is given by the formula under root s upon m right where s is the stiffness and so if i square this equation so omega n square becomes s upon m so i can write s that is the stiffness of the uh, this uh, shaft as m omega m n omega square so here wherever the s term is there right s we have replaced it with m omega n square right now the second term we all already know zeta which is the damping uh, factor it is the ratio of c that is the damping coefficient upon critical damping coefficient right and the value so here from here we can find the value of c which is the damping coefficient that is zeta into 2 m omega n right for this we have already done the derivation so we can replace the value of c with 2 m omega n in this equation into zeta of course right so from this equation if we take omega n m common right omega n square m common so this is how we'll get the equation and the equation will be in the form of r upon e is equal to omega square upon omega n and in denominator we'll have 2 zeta omega upon omega n so this is under root right because uh, here we have taken now r upon e plus 1 minus omega square upon omega n square right so what the condition says if we want to find the critical speed that means omega n will become equal to omega c and this is where we can find the critical speed of the shaft when it is under the damped or when we can say it is in the damping medium or the damped forces are taken into consideration now to find this angle phi which is basically the phase lag in the system these two equations we have already discussed equation number 4 and 5 right we have already discussed it so if we divide these two equations what we get so this sine and cos phi they become 10 phi right e it gets cancelled out and r gets cancelled out m cancels out and 1 omega cancels out so this is what we are left with again we will replace omega this s with m omega n square and we will replace also the value c with zeta into cc where cc is the critical damping coefficient right here we can take omega n square common so this is the final value of 10 phi so if you do 10 inverse of this equation you can find the value of phi which is the angle this rotor makes with this the axis of right rotation so this is the angle phi 